James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be July the 26th, 2014, Saturday afternoon. All right. That's just what it is. It is what it is. That's right. It is what it is. Time definitely flies. Time waits for no man. And time and tide, like Ed Norton said on the honeymoon, time and tide waits for no man. And, um,. The months, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the days, the weeks, the months, and the years fly by. The seasons are very quick to be over. That's why people should not get too upset when we have hot weather in the summer. Because it's summer now, of course. You know, I mean... Because then they'll be complaining in the winter. They'll be complaining when their cars are buried in a blizzard. And, and, and when it gets cold, they'll be complaining <laughs> that they're freezing. So... <coughs> appreciate the good old summertime yeah. in the good old summertime well that's that was what eight, late, uh, Victorian era song but anyway oh, but they had bicycles for two yeah hot fun in the summertime uh, uh, summer in the city all these all these positive songs about summer were probably written by people with with you know songwriters and musicians with big bucks and central air conditioning and limos with air conditioning so they never had to really really sweat and and experience hot sticky weather mm. you know you know it's strange though humidity back, humidity back in the day around this area like New York and etc it was mean, cooler no it wasn't it was hotter oh, oh I know yeah, a yellow yeah. fever here and things like that. Well, that's like that little joke I made about the girls, the women, or of ladies. Of course, Valley Forge was very cold. Yeah. <laughs> ladies during the Victorian era were dressed up to the chin with, and, with petticoats. To the nines, baby. With layers and petticoats and, 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 and in a hot summer, no air conditioning. And they're on the front porch, sitting on the front porch, fanning themselves. Fanning they, their head. What about the bottom yeah. by the, the vagina? And then they wore hats. Yeah, I mean, they were all covered. The men were all more or less covered even the farmers were covered you know well, and they wore, have always stunk and they wore black okay. often yeah. like the Amish people today still wear black how yeah. do they how did they take it back then I don't know and and they had this thing about showing flesh you know the puritanical uh, religious nuts back then had this thing about showing skin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's kind of like the well the way the Islamic women are covered up they don't understand the Reichian view of sexual energy because yes, sir. if you have something that excites you right. to the point of ejaculation mm -hmm. or right. orgasm. In other words, when your scum guppies are ready to fly. When you have released that energy, <laughs> yeah. the same thing that got your goat doesn't do it again until you have built up that energy for release again so it really has very little to do with skin or things of that nature well it has to do with how much energy you built up in the meantime well of course people have their have different preferences and fetishes and Correct. likes and dislikes but I know they do not excite one all right. of the time but I notice that yeah that can vary you're uh -huh. right that can vary but I noticed that the feeling after uh, uh, an ejaculation that uh, of a release of pent-up energy over a long period that big geyser quote unquote so to speak gives you a, a very uh, euphoric feeling like you're a new human being similar to when you uh, if you take spirulina chlorella psyllium husk and you take a humongous you dump, dump. Oh my you God. will feel also the same very similar euphoric 
uh, calm, serene feeling, like you're because a new. Because it is a detoxification. Like you're a new. Body. You're a new person, so you're releasing something Stale that is. energy. You're releasing something that that has built up in your body. Correct. And that's what gives you that that peaceful, calm, serene. Um, new springtime after a rain. After a rain, beautiful spring. Endorphin. I don't know. Uh, 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 um, Yes. This feeling that you're a brand new person. Brandy new, that's correct. And they both, they're different, but they, they both give a similar feeling of well-being. And we hope that the big dump has cleaned off the colon walls a bit. Yeah, you, you, okay. well, the colon and also the small intestines have the villi, which yeah. is where little finger-like projectiles, that's where all your nutrients get absorbed into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. You have to detox is extremely important. Ask Garino, mm -hmm. Dr. Garino. Well, let me get the formalities over with. Usually, I do it right away. But we touched on an interesting subject. The show is, of course, uncensored and uh, unrehearsed, ad libbed. Anything and anything can happen. Anything off the top of our heads can come out of our mouths. Uh, we go from one subject to the next, but they are all important in some way. Some are more important than others. I'm going to pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored, the backbone of this organization, in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. <whistles> arr, arr. Welcome aboard our uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth, Starship Censored. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, Duh. sir? I'm still alive. Still raring to go. Pipe aboard the captain here, aboard uh, the, Make star it so. the Starship. Jeez. Make it so. Speaking of uh, Starship, um, yeah. I believe it was uh, day before yesterday. Yeah, George uh, Takai was on uh, the Daily Show with John Stewart. George Takai is a smart cookie. He has a lot to say about society and politics. How how did he do? I missed it. Very well, very well. He's got a new book out, I believe. Really? That's why he was there, I believe. He should just. No, no, a documentary. I'm sorry, a documentary. Of his life with his lover and etc. You know, he should, he should just really, he should just sit down with William Shatner and make up. You know, and just iron out their differences. You know, I mean, at their age, to, to continue to to give each other the cold shoulder and snub one another. Mm -hmm. You know, they they have to be both in their eighties, right? I don't know. Yeah, well, I know. How old is Shatner? Shatner is in his early eighties. Yeah, I think so. But anyway, the guy is, uh, he's pretty sharp. He's, he's, he looks healthy. He's an athlete, you know. He works out. I, I saw some pictures of him working out. And, uh... Well, as I told the young lady yesterday, fitness is not health. Do not confuse the both of them. No, they're no. They're quite they, different. They're quite different. Yeah, you, right. you, you can have a serious illness and still be able to exercise. It just can't be a serious illness that hinders you from mm. exercise. Well, let me start off by saying uh, I'm going to dedicate this week's show to my sister, Lisa, Lisa Madonna, who is right now uh, at home in pain, recovering from her surgery that she had Thursday. Uh, get well soon, recover fast. I will see you later on after the show. Sister Lisa, I love you and uh, I dedicate the show to her. I also, of course, want to say hi to uh, my good friend and, and uh, uh, a fitness partner on the West Coast, Southern California, Mr. Rick Brown, Mr. Slick Rick Brown, and also Slick Rick. to my near dear, uh, very dear friend, Miho from Osaka, Japan. Those were very nice restaurant photos that she posted of her with friends and I think a relative in a, a 
a very cozy looking, uh, just a beautiful atmosphere uh, Japanese restaurant. You know, some of the landmarks in Osaka. So, uh, um, all right, let me. I hope she wasn't eating sushi. Well, with I had all the worms and bacteria. I, I had a discussion with her about uh, about the uh, what is it the the the, the, the blowfish. Ah, the, yes, the, the raw blowfish guy. must must be cleaned properly. Properly by it can only be an done expert. by an expert, not your average fishmonger, but an mm -hmm. expert that knows how to carefully. Make sure that the gallbladder is not punctured or severed because that is that contains the toxin that will kill you if any of it gets on the meat of the blowfish. Uh, how's it called? Mogo, Moju, Mobo. I don't know. It's a Mojo. My Mojo's working. Baby. Not Mojo. It's, it sounds similar to that, but anyway, regardless, well, it's yeah. blowfish. It's a delicacy in Japan, but it will be your very last delicacy uh -huh. if any of the. Uh, the uh, inner fluids of the gallbladder get on the meat. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's dangerous. People still die every year from eating this. So anyway, oh she says, "Oh yeah, it's po it's popular here." Oh boy. Yeah, there's so many there's so many safe things you can eat at a sushi bar, sushi sashimi. You don't have to eat the blowfish. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um. <coughs> Republicans are proven plutocrat scum. That's nothing new. That that's obvious. They they they're very obvious in their agenda and how they feel. They they're not shy about telling you what they want, how they feel, and what they want to do. Not anymore. They 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 have become very brazen. Corporate whores and plutocrat ass kissers. Yeah, um, and it's. Uh, but but they're not they're not they have no remorse they're not ashamed to tell you what they want. However, Rand Paul, Paul Ryan, right, Marco Rubio, all uh, supposed presidential candidates, the douchebags, in the douchebags of the Republican are now Party. pretending that they are compassionate conservatives. Is and that, that so? they like the poor, they're going to help the poor. Oh, really? Why Paul Ryan actually oh, sure. uh, 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 is, is, is uh, calling for his budgets uh, to work better. Why that means putting money into it, Mr. Ryan. And why are they so anti-Obamacare if they have so much compassion for the poor? Because they're liars! Well, what about the idiots that don't call them out, that listen to these lies? Exactly. Like the people interviewing That's them? That's who keep voting for them. The voters yeah. who are brain cell deficient? There should be nobody voting for a Republican. Listen, except people like Bill Gates. If you vote Republican, you're voting for pro Your demise. Pro corporations and pro rich. If you vote in Democrat, they're still corporatists. They're, they are the lesser of the two evils but you're pretty much voting for pro-people and pro-planet. Okay, that's it. It's that simple. Now, you were going to, before, I only have one thing to say before we commence with the show. Wait. But before I say this, you, you asked me to bring up the word poverty. No, I said it. Oh, that was it. Okay. That was it. Yeah, they're, they're, they they don't the have liars, a, the liars. They don't the liars pretending. the liars for hire don't do not have a compassionate or em, empathy empathetic. Yeah, they're empathic. missing oxytocin. Yeah, there's That's no true. well no that let that goes easy on them that, that when you say no oxytocin well, to me yeah. they're demons. Well, of course they're demons. That's how you, they allow that influence in because they lack oxytocin. How the hell can you have compassion if you're against social programs? You're against Food, Bingo. Sta food stamps. You don't even want to help the veterans who came just came back from the war. You're 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 anti. You you you're you're so bigoted. You're against anti refugees. Oh, you 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 care more about, uh, <clears throat> you know, cor what, what, anytime corporations want anything, they get it immediately. That's right. You know, um, but um, the children. The uh, I mean, uh, poor children. 
that are, are desperate. About 18 million uh, go hungry every day in America. In yeah. America. Well, I, I meant that they're like the refugees crossing the border. They're, no, they're, not they're desperate for survival, but but that desperation is not important to them. Well, the United States uh, tells all the other countries to uh, take care of the refugees, like the ones coming over the border of, from Syria, and said, take care of them. But we don't do it all. The refugees here. No. They only, you know? they only, they're only quick to bail out the rich and corporations. However, That's corporations, it. corporations want more uh, H1, uh, what do you call it, visa? H1B visa yeah. uh, imports. Yeah. Because they work cheap. What does that tell you? Because they like those kind of immigrants, don't they? Yeah, they're such, they come in they're such greedy hypocrites. Uh, yeah. Uh, some some idiot um, demons. Some idiot re, uh, demonic Republican uh, made a statement. Um, I think I don't know if it was uh, John Stewart or Stephen Colbert that talked about it. It's uh, he said that uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, worshiping God and money at the same time. And then, <laughs> oh, it was John Stewart, and then he and then he brought up a biblical verse that says you cannot worship God yeah. and money. Yeah, at God the same and time. Mammon. Yeah, at God the, and Mammon. At the same time, uh, 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 it's because like it's idolatry. Is what God it is. must be first in your life. See how and they, if Mammon is first, that's money, scholar or whatever you want to call it. See, then God is second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh. It's like it's like paganism, uh, worshiping money. It's idolatry. But you see how they like to change yeah, the rule. The thing. You see how I, they like to change the rule book, the Republicans. Well, they change the rule book like they change Wikipedia. They, They're they, up there every day changing they, Wikipedia. They want to change. They want to. They want to alter the Bible like Wikipedia. They've done it already. What are you talking about altering? Well, look. This guy said, "Oh, there's nothing wrong with worshiping God and money at the same time," and he gets away with it because you know why? Because people let him get away. Because 99 percent of all people don't understand or know what the Bible says. But what we just talked about so far in this show is simplicity. You do not need to be brilliant to understand this. It's no. simple. It's common sense, just like most of life. It's common sense. All right. All right, I'll give you common sense. Here's a biblical common sense. Okay. Are there Jews in the world today? Yes. Okay. There are Jews in the world today. Where are the other ten tribes named Israel? Do they exist today? The descendants of The lost of them? tribes? Yeah, yeah, the descendants, they, they have to exist. Ah, they have to. They propagated. But can people they, name did them? Did they make babies? Can they point to them? We don't, no. know, we don't know where they are. Well, we do know. The Bible tells you where they are. But do the people? No. No. So there's a common sense they thing. Know, the people know nothing about this. I was reading in Time magazine today. There are these people, atheists, that now meet like as if it was a church service. <laughs> How could atheism be a... Uh, be... Well, you know. Oh, you mean it's an organization of atheists? Yes, and it's on that... Uh, so what are, what that's are, so they, what are they going to talk about? We, uh, you know, uh, the right? point is, a lot of them are ex-pastors and things really? who have lost faith. They don't believe anymore. All right. So the one pastor says something like, well, you know, I never believed in hell. Now where does he get that from? It's not in the Bible. Why do you think... Now there's a pastor. Why do you think my, many people, uh, instead of reading the Bible, which would take some effort, they would rather sit on their fat asses and listen to a pastor. And then if the pastor is uh, yeah, wrong, well, they're listening to lies and misinformation from the pastor. That's correct. But then, the, then you have to go to the other, uh, the other enlightenment where the Bible says that, that it's not for everyone. Everyone cannot understand it. Just as Jesus... Oh, Jesus spoke in parables to make it clear to the people. No, he didn't. He spoke in parables to keep it from the people. Only those that he chose to uh, uh, 
allowed to understand what he was talking about. So it was it was deliberately saving was not for everyone then, and it is not now. Understand that people who believe in the rapture. These people are probably scared out of their wits to deal with the tribulation, so they make they made up this this excuse of the rapture that we're, we're our asses are going to be safe. But uh, um, yeah, so in other words, it was deliberate to only for the word to only reach a certain amount of individuals, a hundred and forty. Uh, Whatever, 124,000. No, 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 no. That's no. from. That's from. Uh, no, no, no. That goes back to the prophet. When Jesus was uh, crucified, he only reached 120. 120 individuals. 120 real believers. So that was that's that's all he him and God wanted to reach at yet, that time. Yet they fed 5,000 at one time with the fishes and the loaves. So 5,000 people came to hear him. Can you imagine if they had the internet back then? I wonder well, no, it wouldn't serve a purpose because, as, as I keep saying, he was not here to save everyone. This is the fallacy yeah. of Christianity. Did you, and maybe Christianity he, believes that God and the devil are at, they are fighting for souls. No, they're not. God allows the devil to do everything that he does. You mean to test people? To test people. To find, like for instance, in the tribulation, it says that 50% of people who already were baptized and repented and were God's people, 50% yeah. will die and 50% will live because they will come back. But 50% will remain unbelieving. So, so whether you're still alive during the tribulation whether you have perished 5,000 years ago or whatever, no matter how you shake it, everyone's going to be resurrected and judged in the same way. The great white throne judgment. So, it, Revelation you know, 20. You know, uh, so most likely, well, uh, uh, when somebody dies and, uh, and rots away, uh, death is probably like a very, very deep sleep where you die and then all of a sudden you wake up and you're in front of the great white throne. So it's it, so you could be dead for for five thousand years, and it will seem like you just Yesterday. fell asleep, right? So it's like when you go to sleep and you wake up, right? But all these other right ideas, like you know, the uh, evangelical born again people believe in a Dante's Inferno and, and they, heaven, and they believe we go to heaven and yeah. we play hard. And, and they believe in a form of purgatory, like a waiting room, and they also believe there are different neighborhoods in heaven, where if Mansions you, if you and rooms. where if you do, if you, you if like you, at the Hamptons on Long Island. Yeah. Well, if you provide more service, <laughs> better service to the Lord, if you're out there proselytizing and, and bothering people, you get put in a better neighborhood in heaven. Not for proselytizing. They, they seem to be like, uh, what is that? You said that was an ego thing, right? Of course it is. Going around You're serving trying to, yourself, not God. Going around trying to supposedly save you know? other people. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I said. There is no saving in that sense. There's only a small amount of people will be, and by the way, those people who are saved and are alive at the time of the tribulation will be taken to a place of safety they will not be going through the tribulation right because they happen to be still alive because they are still alive right. now, of course it happened once before in the bible pella they were to move to the uh, to pella yeah. to avoid the the uh, romans well of course of, of, of course all the heavy hitters have long been deceased and they will be resurrected but anyway uh we, we're, we're giving you uh a bit of uh, end time Bible prophecy because of course uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is, uh, has the, cr the credentials to be able to tell us these things and uh, yeah but the Joe Osteens are the ones who are believed oh the prosperity preachers and the pop oh, they live in their mansions and they're filthy rich from donations but I I wonder how much money isn't they, that they, socialism? 
that they don't pay taxes? And they, that too. And, and, at all? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, socialism, what, uh, when some other people give you money to live on. Is that yes, not socialism? Yes. Yeah. What about the fact that uh, I would love to find out how much of their fortune they donate to the poor, to help the poor? Not much. Since the Bible tells the rich to help the poor well, and, help. And, and give to the poor all the time. Two coats. But it's loaded with information about so the... So two coats doesn't mean uh, a, 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 a little stipend every month uh, for welfare. It means making that poor person no longer poor. Yeah, not, not just for survival and preser preservation, yeah. which is what uh, the average worker today is doing, just uh -huh. surviving yeah. without any surplus cash. Well, what I what I mean is, uh, I lost my train of thought because you, interru you interrupted me. Uh, yes, it'll come. It'll come. Uh, so um, I don't know. It'll I just come. totally forgot. I was going to say something important. It'll come. So <clears throat> the um, yeah, the, the, they come up. The evangelicals have their own. Uh, interpretation of the Bible and oh uh, I was gonna say uh, well part of, of what I was gonna say is that people think you know they they think of think of Hollywood too much and they think the devil cannot work within the body of a church and, and they're very wrong about that he, he exi he's alive and well in the body every in the church. single church every single what you would call a religion right Except for one, yeah, the devil works through as an angel. Everyone. as an angel of light. Everyone. Now, Joel Olstein, <clears throat> you know, like I was saying, the Bible is chock full of of commands for the rich to give to the poor and help the poor. I don't like the word help. Give. It's not a matter of help. What is it? It's a matter of getting them out of poverty. Well, that's not. A, hey, okay, here's ten dollars. But there's, if there's no, here, if, if the opportunity is not in America, if the job market is almost non-existent and everything's getting outsourced, uh, how, in their, in their right mind and logically, how can a Republican say, "Ah, eh, get a job, you lazy bum"? They do it. Get it. Get where? You're lucky. They do it. You're lucky if you get a fast food job. They do it. And and McDonald's, of course, the CEOs are getting more money than ever before. Than ever before, deliberately rigged that way. Correct. And they're all against. Well, all conservatives are against the minimum wage, but the minimum wage is still far below the cost of living. But the minimum wage remove downward. Get your siphon, baby. And see Trick. what we have done. This is a siphon, by the way. There is no trickle down economics or Reaganomics or whatever you want to call it. Never. Voodoo economics, as H.W. Yeah. Bush called it. I've heard of a uh, voodoo. voodoo child played by Jimi Hendrix. Song, this great song. Any, anyway, there is no trickle down e economics. There's pistol down, because they, they piss on, on the mainstream. But trickle-down economics was never meant to work, and it never has worked, and it never will. What we have is siphoned up to the top 20% economics. 20%? About 20%. The, the people that are do not have to live on a budget at, ever is the top 20%, right? Okay. Yeah, but the top 1%, they really rake it in. They rake it in. Oh, they really oh, rake, they it, in. rake it, like it in. Like a pyramid scheme. That's what it is. Siphon up economics. Ponzi. The, the devil's economics is what we have. Not trickle down. So get that through your thick skulls, you uh, you imbecilic uh, red state rednecks out there. Mm -hmm. You religious nuts uh, that belong to a cult. Get that through your thick heads. Alright. Alright, now let me read this and then we'll start the show. Okay. You're going to love this. Oh boy. Michelle Bachman. Oh, he, yeah. loves it, he loves it already. Oh boy. Wait till I read it. Michelle Bachman 
during a conservative radio show called uh, Faith and Liberty, accused the gay community of promoting a deviancy, tyranny, and child rape. Child rape? She warned that gays will abolish the age of consent laws, which will eliminate statutory rape laws, so adults will be able to freely prey on young children sexually. She also predicted that gay rights advocates will legalize polygamy and, and, and enact hate speech laws across the United States in order to bring about the rise of tyranny. Now that last part sounds like a contradiction of, of, of from a Republican because the Republican is the master of hate speech. So I don't get that part, but well, this, uh, there's a recording of her annoying voice that I that are that is on the uncensored, hard-hitting truth Facebook group, and and the article, the full articles there too. So uh, well, so she's uh, the, the point is she is she is using uh, talking points that uh, have nothing to do with gays. She's accusing gays of being pedophiles. Yes. Now, the gay lifestyle has nothing to do with being a pedophile. Absolutely nothing not. Nothing whatsoever. They, no, they know. It has, it has nothing, that they're not connected right. to pedophilia or, or even rape or deviancy or, the, you know. The, well, one stupid Republican came up with the fact that if we allow gays to marry and et cetera, pretty soon we'll be able to marry dogs and horses and Sexuality, you know? Yeah, that was all. These are how stupid these people are. This is mentioned to the public. That's that's what's more amazing about it. it they're said in public. Yeah. Like, and, pe uh, and public people believe it. They believe. That's like saying marijuana will lead to hard drugs. Well, they've done that in the 1920s and etc. Reefer madness. Yeah. Was the big? I'm sure you could find it on YouTube. Even reefer madness. So they think the Republicans think that gay people uh, uh, condone uh, pedophilia and want to legalize and want to legalize yeah. age of consent. Frankly, in the, in America. Which states do have the lowest ages of consent? Southern states. Red states. Yeah. And they also have the most uh, food stamp re and welfare recipients in many of these red states. If I'm accurate. The poorer states, yes. If I'm accurate. Yeah. Phil of the Duck Dynasty. Yeah. Married his wife when she was fourteen. I guess they're from Louisiana. Really? Yeah, fourteen. Isn't that isn't that young? Well, obviously not for a southern 14 state. Fourteen is like a freshman year of high school, first year of high school. You get married? <laughs> I think back then. What? Did maybe she was just barely getting into. Puberty, for God's sake. So, like, they're afraid. Well, puberty starts when they start when they begin menstruating. Yeah. More or less. But so, in, the, in the older days, it took longer. So Republicans are, are the religious nuts are afraid that the, 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 the girls won't be virgins when they get married if they don't marry if they don't marry them Young off enough. right away. Young enough. Some cultures are like that, you know. <laughs> that, that's it's, it's insane. That, 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 that's just as insane as an arranged marriage. Yes. Arranged marriages are insane. Covering up women with, with the, you know, what, how do they call them? The, what, jadas or what, what 
I don't know. The covering uh, covering up women where you cannot identify, you cannot see their face. Yeah, but they look like a whatchamacallit then with a, like, uh, you got, what the hell? There's a little thing here and a little lookout and everything else is covered up. Yeah, just the what eyes. The hell? How does a how does a Muslim man decide who he likes? Well, maybe it was arranged. Maybe I, was I don't idea. think I don't think a Muslim man. Well, I don't think a, they go out there and say, "Oh, no. I love that girl right there in, with in, that with that thing on her." And I'm going. No, no. Her. In India, they do a lot a lot of arranged marriages, but a Muslim man can technically have more than one wife. I think up to four or five is a limit. If he can afford it, maybe, but I don't think so. But he, he has to he has to determine if he likes the girl by, yeah, how by the hell seeing do do her. How the hell do you do that? By seeing her. They, I'm seeing sure they, her, touching her, being near her. I'm sure they don't have x-ray vision. You know. But as far as theories go, I'll, I'll put another theory out there. Right. Republicans lack oxytocin, and I believe that uh, Arabs uh, uh, or those people who do cover up their women, etc., uh, 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 actually uh, uh, lack. Uh, 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 I forgot what I was going to say. Don't mind me. I'm, I'm well, they lack love, okay? Lack Let's love. Let's put it that way. Lack love. What about the ones that, that want to uh, uh, mutilate the w w women's vaginas? In, the, in Africa, in, yeah. In, uh, right, the, the, the Muslims in Africa, right? They want they want to cut off their what? A clitoris? Yeah, they clitorectomies. Clitorectomies? I mean... God forbid. That's they, not. That's not a lack. God forbid that, they should be excited during intercourse. That's not just the lack of love and oxytocin. That's that's beyond that. It's demonization. Right. So try not to feel too sorry Remember for, for the evils of the world. Remember something. According to the Bible, if you got something that is against sexuality. That's of the devil. Because God said in the Garden of Eden, be fruitful and multiply. That's what sex was for. You see how between the, the you know, Adam and Eve, husband and wife, was to be a bond, a pleasure bond, which brought them and kept them together. But yeah. the devil doesn't like that. Now, apparently, because he's sexless. Sexless. Uh, uh, all the angels have no gender. He can't reproduce. All the angels have no gender. Uh, is correct. that correct? That's so, correct. so there must be uh, there must be millions upon millions of people that are disobeying the last paragraph of the Bible about about you know not not altering not adding anything to the Bible or taking away anything there must Every be a, a lot version of the bible today has been altered censored and expurgated well i, I saw Except i saw the different the, the verses i saw them in the, the difference in, between them yes in the different versions the only version you can trust today it's not the new king james but the old King James. The original King so James. These and thou's. These thou's, thy's, hast, you know, all that. Yeah, the original King James. That's correct. Okay. Now, let us sink our crocodile teeth. Or caiman. Or, well, being that there's so, many, again. There's so many shark movies uh, in the summertime with let us sink Sharknado! Sharknado, yeah. Let us uh, sink our great white shark teeth or megalodon teeth into these readings. Okay. 
thousands of women whose genitals might have been photographed during gynecological exams can share a hundred and ninety million dollar settlement from Johns Hopkins Health System. I read this article. I'm glad you say but they will have to describe their trauma before seeing any money. They will go, oh, I, I was photographed. My doctor, I trusted my gynecologist. Uh, now everybody knows what my coochie looks like. <laughs> hold on, hold on. My levity belt. Kuchirama is running wild. That might be painful for some women. Kuchi mania. Yeah. Who feel profoundly violated by Dr. Nikita Levy. Nikita Khrushchev. Always wear a neck brace when you go into court. I, I see that in Hollywood all the time. Right. Who committed suicide in February. He did? 2013 after being found with hundreds of pelvis pictures. Well, of course he's going to eventually get found. What did he think? He was never going to get caught? And then he killed himself? Others who have gotten over their shock in the year and a half since then might wonder if it's worth their trouble. Ugh. Still other patients who didn't recall any exam room trauma might try to collect anyway. So, um, one woman who contacted the Associated Press seeking to join the class action suit couldn't remember leaving, but said she would try for the money. I could have been a victim. If I was, you should have to pay for what he did. Yeah, yeah. And the hospital should have been more aware of what was going on at the facility. What about the HIPAA laws? The privacy laws in the, in the medical profession. You mean you don't move your hips? Ah. No, the, 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 your right to privacy of your medical information is supposed to be protected. Oh, yeah, well, when it's, when it's put on computer, it ain't protected anymore, because it can be hacked. Well, anything can be hacked nowadays. Okay. The Pentagon is hacked. Yeah, even... Uh, the Pentagon is hacked, the big businesses are hacked, like China. Sure. Even... even Industrial espionage. Even people with, uh, with uh, a chest congestion hack. <coughs> the Associated Press does not usually identify possible victims of sex crimes. As many as 8,000 women and girls already joined the class action. News of the huge settlement filed Monday may encourage more of the 12,600 patients Levy saw during his 25 years at Johns Hopkins. Investigators found 1,200 videos. And 140 images wow. on Levy's home computers, which they believe he secretly took with tiny cameras during exams. But none linked to any particular patient and no evidence that they were shared. He committed suicide without explaining himself or pointing to any victims. The eight law firms involved 
told plaintiffs they could ask for as much as 35% to cover costs, leaving $123.5 million in an interest-bearing account until each woman's claim is resolved. Mm -hmm. That could add up to thousands of dollars to women whose private parts might have ended up on the doctor's hard drive. <laughs> of course. But it won't be divided equally. Some women who also reported being sexually abused by the doctor presumably would be entitled to much more. Others who shook off their trauma might get nothing. Well, I've heard um, different stories over the years um, where a doctor um, in this one case a doctor was knocking out his uh, he was a dentist actually he was okay. knocking out his female patients with uh, chloroform or, or a little too much gas uh, and uh, you know uh, having his way with them a little get too much gas Yes, that's a stinky affair. Yeah. No, he was knocking them out, rendering them unconscious, and having his way with them. And uh, I think he videoed it. Um, and uh, he's an Italian doctor, and they, 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 they titled the story Pasta El Porno. Instead of Forno, you know, which means oven, Pasta El Porno. But anyway. There's all, you always hear of a case like that every now and then. Uh, but this, of course, does not represent the entire medical profession. Just like, uh, unless you're talking about Republicans, and they're, most of them suck. 99.9999% of them. You ask. District Judge Neil V. Wake yeah. was attending a ceremony for a judicial colleague when he received an urgent and unusual request. Lawyers for a condemned inmate wanted him to stop an execution that didn't seem to be working. He's been gasping, snorting, unable to breathe, and he's not dying. Oh boy, I, I came across this article. Lawyer Rob, Robin C. Conrad told the judge over the phone. Very disturbing. We are asking our motion, ask for you to issue an emergency stay and ordered the Department of Corrections to start life-saving techniques. The judge asked his law clerk to quickly locate a phone number for an attorney for the state so he could find out what was happening. Isn't this supposed to be a very humane way to dispatch a person? Yeah, it was with a needle. Uh, lethal injection? Yeah, with a brand new Oh, a new drug. Yeah. And and this new drug was supposed to make it more humane? Maybe, or quicker. Well, apparently it didn't work it with... Didn't work. It didn't work with this guy. Yeah. They conferenced in Jeffrey A. Zick, who was getting updates from the scene from Arizona's corrections chief. What followed provided a window 
into the nearly two-hour execution of 55-year-old Joseph Rudolph Wood as the defense lawyer pleaded to stop it. And the Arizona attorney assured the judge everything was fine. Oh, Arizona, that figures. How come it doesn't surprise me? Uh, yeah, they got the, uh, what's the name of the governor? Uh, Jan Brewer. Jan Brewer and, 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 and Sheriff Arpaio. Arizona. Yeah, right. But uh, um, um, talk about hateful. Uh, yeah, well, I don't th I think they give more than one injection. I think the first injection renders uh, unconscious rather renders them unconscious like when they euthanize a cat or a dog yeah first they first they put they make them unconscious and then they give the uh, and, and then they stop the heart or whatever and then they they give them the second shot that stops the heart <sighs> right which stops respiration yeah. naturally if you stop the heart you know the respiration um, ceases and then uh, the, when the heart has stopped for a certain amount of time, then the, the animal or the human becomes legally dead. In the middle of the argument, Zick informed them that Wood had died. Was this true, though? The execution brought new attention to the death penalty debates in the United States, as opponents said it was proof that lethal injection is cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah, well, Jesse Ventura does not believe in the death penalty. Well, if you're a decent human being, you can't. You can't allow the state to take life. The state has no business taking life. Well, I think... Even God... I mean... In ancient Israel... I mean... Allowed the perpetrator to run to a city of protection. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, Jesse Ventura is says uh, life in prison without parole, without the possibility of parole, which which you know is very important. You know. No, you know, uh, parole uh, uh, for good behavior is is not restitution for the victim. And uh, the Republicans like the death penalty because they don't want to pay for you being in prison. Because then it costs thirty thirty five thousand dollars a year, money, or whatever yeah. the hell it is. Well, yeah. Well, that 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 spends uh, money that they can get in corporate welfare, in free handouts. That's right. That, that's money that the rich would rather get their hands on. That's right. That's what it comes down to. On, on Thursday, yeah. the state's top prison official said Arizona would temporarily put on hold any future executions as it reviewed what happened. Department of Corrections Director Charles Ryan read a statement outside his office in which he dismissed the notion that the execution was botched, calling it an erroneous conclusion and pure conjecture. Botched? Yeah. Well, they, they put the proper amount of, of drug in the syringe. They injected in him. They pulled the needle out. Everything went inside of him. How could you botch that? They did. Maybe it was Mr. Wood's reaction to the new drug. He did not take any questions from reporters. He said, IV lines in the inmates' arms were perfectly placed and insisted that Wood felt no pain. Oh, IV, okay. So 
Sorry. He said that the Arizona Attorney General's office would not seek any new death warrants while his office completed a review of the execution practices ordered by Governor Jan Brew. Now, did, did, did Mr. Wood uh, expire? He's dead now, yeah. He's dead now, okay. It but, took but, him two hours to die. Two hours of suffering to die. Oh, okay, okay. I remember a case involving the electric chair that, oh. that took a... The is the blue light on? Yeah. Well, press that My button. elbow must have turned something Yes, it on. did. Thank you. Okay. Oh, uh, 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 that was that was bad. Yeah. The electric chair is bad because if you don't put the wet sponge under the under the dome, is that how it was? I don't know what happened. Yeah, in I other words, if you took the guy along and not the guy. If you don't do it properly, it, it is it is very inhumane. Some people want the firing. Finish here because I want to right, add right, something right. at the end here. Okay, and we're good. running out of time. Woods lawyer Dale Bache called it a horrifically botched execution that should have taken ten minutes. Wood gasped more than six hundred times. Yikes! Over an hour and a half. During the gasps, his jaw dropped and his chest expanded and contracted. An Ohio inmate gasped in similar fashion for nearly 30 minutes in January. An Oklahoma inmate died of a heart attack in April, minutes after prison officials halted his execution because the drugs weren't properly administered. Hmm. States have scrambled in recent years to find alternative drugs because of a shortage rooted in European opposition to capital punishment. Now, when they interviewed, let's say, uh, relatives or common people, about this incident? You know what they said? What? Good, let them suffer! He killed two people or whatever, or three people, I don't know. Well, what uh, Make them suffer! Uh, in, 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 with heinous crimes, I agree about the suffering part. But that's not how God looks at it. Yeah, but how do you how do you get restitution for there is none. for the suffering of innocent people? There is none because that according to that's not nice. According to God, who gives life, He will be giving life again. So whatever happens now happens. It's man's fault, and man so, takes the responsibility for it. death, life. Destruction, whatever. It's his fault, not God's fault. So you want you want the perpetrator who might have tortured, raped, and then uh, murdered, let's say, uh, let's say a serial killer of, wo of women. You want this person uh, caught, not to not to suffer, caught and confined, but not tortured. No. Well, I, I'm sure the. I'm sure that the you family. I'm sure the family of the of the murdered girls would uh, beg to exactly. differ. Beg to differ but, with you. <laughs> but and I, I'm going to side with them. But well, then see what happens when you like torture and the death of another person. This ruins part of you. I mean, I mean the the punishment fitting the crime. That's. That's what I'm for. But that ruins part of you. Let, do you think that someone who administers uh, the lethal injection, the firing squad, uh, 
what's the what's the uh, the uh, the electric chair called down in Florida? Old Sparky. Old Sparky <laughs> ministers these stuff or cuts off somebody's heads or lops off somebody's hands or whatever thing. You think that person is not chained for doing those things? Yeah. What about when soldiers come back? Yeah. From the army, and it said with post-stress syndrome, the heart rate did not change. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So well, that's what yeah. when you kill, or yeah. the state kills, or something like that, you become just like the killer. Well, if you use the devil's tools, you become the devil. Yeah, but you got to. You have to understand the emotion runs very high in those situations. That's yeah, when you have a love. When you have a loved one, exactly, that is murdered. But that doesn't mean that you can do the same thing as he did. Oh, look, I'm I'm all for owning a firearm and blowing away intruders that try to break into your house. Uh, but uh, no, the, uh, the doctor did that the other day. The uh, nut bag that he'd been treated for like treating for like ten years yeah. <laughs> came back and uh, shooting at him and shooting at the nurse or whatever. And the doctor pulled out his gun and he shot the guy and the guy shot the guy the doctor twice or something. You know, in certain instances, yes, yeah. that's okay. You mean, you mean the, the 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 man, the patient, went in and kind of surprised. Them them off guard so he was able to get in some shots yeah okay now I mean That's if you're home point. if you're home and you see the front door you know being broken into yeah but now there's now a guy on there's a guy on trial right now yeah for doing that this black woman who was in bad shape and and needed help with the car and etc yeah. Comes to his door, knocking on the door, and he blows her away. Because she was black. Okay. You mean just blows he her away? He was afraid. He j but she was just she was just coming to to ask him she something. She was drunk. She was looking for help. So he, he just blew her away. Right away, interpreted That's her as a potential threat. intruder, a threat. threat. And all she was doing is looking for help. I do, I did, I do remember that. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, another case, unless it's the same one in Detroit, where the person was, you know, yeah, uh, no. knocking at the That's door. That's why all these things are slippery slopes. And got blown away. All right, it's slippery time. Slopes. It's time. Okay. We are going to break for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And I will now meet with uh, our voice artist, William H. Morrow III. And then we he will do our promo commercial. And then we will return <coughs> with the balance of our show um, and uh, our inductee into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. And, uh, but before I induct the, the inductee into the Chisler's Hall of Shame, you'll see a, a photo, an image of what I am going to talk about. You know, it's, it's, there's always new inductees into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. There's always Chislers. There's always Chislers, right? You know, but uh, this is America. This has to do with the uh, uh, food service industry. This is America. Oh, you sound like Larry the Cable Guy now. He, he annoys the hell out of me, that guy. Yeah.
Okay, I'm here with uh, William H. Morrill III, our voiceover artist. Um, okay, w Bill, you know, remember that gentleman we interviewed that was having trouble with the uh, social services here in, uh, in Bergen County, New Jersey? He contacted us and he was telling me all kinds of... It was two gentlemen. One of them hasn't received the, his food stamps in uh, several months, I think. That was one guy. And the other one... Well, last time I spoke to him, he gave up. He doesn't care anymore. He just simply gave up. Well, seven months was Jimmy. Yeah, what, ha what, what happened bother. was there was a glitch in the system, and they and they lost his file was information. Their and they told him it was their, They said it was their mistake. And they wanted him to calm down, go through the whole process, reapply. And he said, "Yeah, but he's I, already in the system. I'd rather not bother." Why should he reapply? He said, "I'd rather not bother." So he gave up. I don't think this. That's what he said. I mean, it doesn't make sense if you're already in the system, and, and there's they, more and, than just and, him that I know about. And they make a mistake. You got to come down and go through that whole process and torture again. So you got to torture the poor soul again for a mistake that the state made. That's right. Which is run by Chris Christie. Well, let me ask you something. Do you think they care about that? No, because they have their full-time jobs. That's right. With benefits. Whether you come or not, there will be others that will be there. They don't care. Well, there's definitely more people than ever applying for social services mm -hmm. with the way the economy and, and more people being put through pure hell and torture, going yeah. in, taking a number. Yeah, for, it's just for, for, for what a lousy one hundred and forty dollars a I, month. I cannot see how they cannot simplify this system for everyone. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it's really uh, it's unfair. It's it's despicable that uh, this is going on. I mean, uh, you, you, when the government makes a mistake, even people collecting SSI, Supplemental Security Income, if the government makes a mistake and pays you $20 more that they claim they paid you, they, they want you to pay them back right away. They made the mistake, so you are penalized for it. Yet if you embezzle millions or criminals, better chance of getting off. They're toying and playing with a little man's or little person's life or lives. People that are trying to survive. For some reason they seem to want or right. enjoy hurting. And I don't know why. Yeah. I would like to know their reasoning behind it. Well, we're talking about people who are relying on their very survival on that little bit of money they get. Food stamps is a drop in a bucket, and meanwhile the Congress is making such a big stink about it. But they'll turn around and give trillions in free corporate welfare and subsidies to, to, to their to the, the, the biggest corporations. Hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. Actually trillions. But you're dealing with a, a little over a hundred or a couple hundred dollars, and they treat you like, like dirt. Yeah, but well, you can say shit. It's, it's an uncensored um, show. No, but well, we want to be a little more professional than that. So, right. but that's just, uh, I don't understand this. Yeah. Now, this other man, what happened was, he was so frustrated. He, 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 he just, he actually needed a, sh needed a tall glass of whiskey on the rocks. <laughs> well, let me interrupt you he, real fast. Like, that I can understand. Number two, don't they understand what stress does to a person? Oh, it's a killer. Number number three, if you don't have the money, you're even more stressed out. Number four, if you go through this process, it even adds more stress to the stress you already have. Right. Are they happy? No. Are they no. enjoying this? Hell no. Would it be better if they just said, why don't you shoot me right here and my family won't press charges? Because trying to kill, trying to kill, because once kill you, me, per se. Once you're once you're all, once you're totally burnt out from the first problem, getting the first problem straightened out, they throw a new one at you. Another question, let me ask you, how much can people or a person, an individual, take? Yes, everyone's different. Everyone has a different everyone has a yeah. limit as well. And they're wearing the hell out of people. Yeah, we're, we're talking of uh, viewers. We're talking about the social services system, the welfare system in the United States today with 
the, with the horrible economy, it's not getting any better. The job market is non-existent, and they, being that the Republicans are in charge of Congress, they they just would rather give the money as subsidies to their rich friends and the people that that contribute to their re-election campaigns and election campaigns, and just say to hell with the veterans. They don't. They cut food stamps for veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan. For oh, God's well, sake. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. That's just food. The, the Veterans Administration, look at these guys have to wait years to be sued for health problems, much less food. Yes, so that's a whole other story. But, it, but it's okay if they get their legs blown off in a war for, no, for big now, oil. No, it's no, all for big oil. No, but, but now that it's so, now that you, you're out of the military, discharged or what have you, we don't need you anymore. We don't have respect for you anymore. They don't care. They simply don't care. Is that the way it's supposed to be? I don't think so. No, no. Now with this, with you this, you should honor and cherish your veterans. You should honor and cherish your people. Yeah. So, well, and a person should not their their value as a human being should not be directly tied into their monetary possession, their material possession. It should be what's in your heart and your mind. How you treat each other, get along, and talk to people. Hey, the man would have, the man would have I know, met. I, I know a lot of scumbags with a lot of money. Yeah. But I know a lot of poor people that are very wealthy, meaning they don't have the money, yeah. but they're good people. Well, there's, you could take a person who has a master's degree or a PhD, very nice individual, very smart as, smart as a whip, and that person could end up broke and possibly homeless. Well, you have that nowadays. You have a lot of PhDs working in fast food places and unemployed. And and warehouses and, and factories too. A lot of professional immigrants that have to resort to so working in factories. Why do we have an educational system then? If this is possibly what you're headed heading towards. People can't people can't even afford to go back to school. So what's the purpose of this? I mean the uh, the tuition is so astronomically Where is high. The reward? There is no reward. Right. At least in Northern Europe, you can go to college everyone even a poor kid with a high high iq can go to college and not have to pay a dime for it to me that's a system that cares about its people well then again they're not the most powerful nations on the planet either as we are so what's the answer the quick fix here i wonder well the united states you know? first needs to keep its nose out of international affairs and stop spending tax dollars on we, international we, no we have to because there's why, so why does involved. the u.s have to give so much because every, every nation is is on the planet is why it's connected in some way it all affects look at the stock markets of one nation syria would have how it affects it everybody is connected it does affect and we are the most powerful nation we are the policemen of the and world that, and that, well, why do we have to be the policemen or are we the occupiers of the world who are we occupied or oil rich countries no, we haven't occupied anybody we give them a lot of business well they occupied iraq they occupied we didn't occupy them. We're not taking them over. We haven't occupied anybody. Name one nation in history we've ever occupied. We've never occupied any nation. We have not occupied anyone. We give you a lot of money and billions to help your people, whatever. You know, we want your oil, you take our stuff too and buy. It's called world trade. You don't, you don't, don't think you don't think the military presence is there to take over their oil rich land? No. In it's the Middle East? Peace, hopefully, because you get these morons like when Iraq invaded Kuwait and whatever, they burned the biggest oil fields and refineries over there in that area. Just like these morons from ISIS over here with uh, uh, Iraq again burned the biggest refinery a few weeks ago. Look at look at what those fascists. We're not, we're not burning these places up. Look, they are. Look at what that that fascist uh, Netanyahu is doing to the poor Palestinians in Gaza. Agree. I don't agree. I I, I back Israel one hundred percent. I think Netanyahu. I've always liked the guy. He didn't ask for those three boys to be kidnapped and murdered. He didn't start this whole thing. Why is no, he's, he, blaming them? No, he's blowing up uh, innocent children. To, uh, I see pictures with their heads off. And They're everything. going after them. They started it. Israel, Israel did not no, ask for this. Israel is, 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 Israel bombing, is bombing areas where with heavy civilian population. Oh, and where, oh, and where the Palestinians don't hide behind their people as shields. Uh -huh. So don't, don't trust right. the Palestinians. Such BS. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta go behind the uh, they, they, Palestinians. No, what they did, uh, using their people, the shield building, 
through those tunnels to sneak into Israel, the whole kidnapping those three boys. Now, they don't want to be part of democracy, a democratized world. They want terrorism. This is the Hamas. They are BS. They're oh. a terrorist organization. Well, this, what this uh, um, gentleman told me was he, uh, getting back to social services, uh, he tried to get on the phone with uh, Bergen County uh, Social Services in Rochelle Park, New Jersey, because he's collecting uh, cash assistance, and uh, his caseworker says, well, let's see if, he, if you qualify for food stamps. So uh, as soon as they put that application in, it screwed everything up. So he sent the requested documents that they, they asked for, that the uh, caseworker asked for. And um, what happened was, uh, since the week of um, Ju June 20th, 2014, he hasn't received any letter, no phone call, or, or money from so social services for the state of New Jersey, Bergen County Social Services, which is on Route 17 South in Rochelle Park, New Jersey. So he tries to call them. Today he tried for God knows how many times. Tried to get somebody on the phone. He got disconnected from voicemails. He, he ended up with voicemail boxes that were full week after week after week, never emptied. This is not good. He was on hold for an operator. And this person, this guy is one of how many right. others? He, he, was wait, he, he was put on hold for an operator at, at that office, and all of a sudden an automated voice says, we cannot connect you with our operator at this time, goodbye, and hangs them up. And another sideline is what well, a lot of these people have certain phone plans on their cells that give them limit, uh, right. limited phone minutes. The like where you're on hold, it's eating your minutes like, alive. Yeah, like assurance wireless, yeah. But, yeah. but but the thing is, he cannot, not, not only can he not get a human being on the phone, he but he gets disconnected. There's no excuse for that. And then he, when he gets a, a, a voicemail, the mailbox is full. That should be cleaned every day. Now, I don't, this cannot be just a coincidence that he can't get. I can't prove it, but it's probably planned. Yeah. That would be my guess. And when he leaves a message, he never ever. Keep it full, yeah. frustrate the public, then you won't be bothered. And then they'll give you up. won't be overloaded or overworked. And then they'll give it's up. probably a plan, I guess. I and, can't and, prove and, that. And, I'm not pointing fingers or anything. And they'll, they'll save the state or the government money in a very unethical way. And I wonder if some of these, these government, government political parties, when they're drinking or whatever, and they're laughing about things like this, possibly. I don't know if this is true. It's just my guess. I believe they're it. They're laughing about the poor, poor man. They're probably saying, I'm not going to say the swear word, but I'll just say, <laughs> F them. They're probably laughing at probably. people. Probably. Because people who have don't care about those <coughs> who have not. I've been at parties. I've met with people that are in the past, and they do the same thing. And my response has always been, I said, oh, come on now. Said, These are human beings, man. You can't do this. I said, this, this is not right. Talking to, to they think I'm wrong for disagreeing. You're talking to assholes. I said, I don't play the game. You're I, talk I, I think about the people. Yeah. Not the money. And you're sitting here having drinks. Yeah. You're, you're stuffing your damn gut. You're being well fed. And you look down on people. You, I would like to know, I would like all of you to go home. Look yourself in the mirror and tell me tomorrow what looks back at you. Yeah. I, th I don't think you'd be too happy. Number two, do you believe in God? I'm sure some don't, some do. If you do, I wonder, do you really think your God is very proud of you right now? I really wonder. I don't think so. So this this guy could, could most likely be stuffing filet mignon and lobster tail down his throat, and he honestly just does not care about no, anybody because no, they're getting theirs because they got theirs and they're getting theirs yeah, right? you're just a number i'm just a number that guy's a number those people are number everybody's just a number f them that's how a lot of them think they don't care yeah i mean you do, granted you do have some good ones in there that do have compassion or feelings but then they're governed by the law there's only so much they're allowed to do as well
but there's no excuse for the for the for the uh, communication but channels, the electronics. Yeah. I mean, the phones yeah. hanging up on the people. I mean, how do you get how do you get disconnected if you're being connected to an office or a voicemail or an operator? Usually, well, that, that plus I mean? plus you, your mailbox should be cleaned daily, so it's open right. for everybody every well, single day. Well, what he told me was he kept on getting disconnected from every oh, excuse. Oh, excuse. every uh, extension. I mean, and, and you don't have caseworkers anymore. Now it's it, it goes according to your situation, like what you what you need done. It, it goes to any random person. That if you tell them I haven't been eating much anymore because I'm not getting money or blah 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 all years the platitudes oh, I'm, I'm very very sorry I'm trying my best well that's not going to do much for you at the moment and you know you know what Republicans so, tell poor people go go ask your relatives for help and your local church you think the local churches can the afford churches are tapped you think the local churches sorry, can afford you again, to help the food people? bank food pantry across this nation tapped. are tapped. They are low, beyond low levels. Okay, so there you go too. So what do you mean? Now Now what? Politicians, they're tapped. Everything everything you've told me is tapped. Everything's Where tapped. else do I go now? now? But you're going out for a nice dinner tonight. I'll, I'm sure with all your political cronies and everything, and having a great time, aren't you? And what will you really accomplish there? What changes will you truly and actually make? Mm -hmm. I doubt it. Any, and then you and then you have brain de brain cell deficient numbskulls, numbskulls, and idiots and morons like Sarah Palin, who made a statement recently and said that God wants President Obama impeached. How does she know what God that's, wants? That's, that's just ignorance. That's does she have a bad phone to God? That's just. I mean, come on. I don't know how to respond to that. That's just ignorance talking. I mean, God, God wants Obama. Come on, please, let's stop. Of the ignorance here. People are this people is, tend is, to know. It's just ridiculous. People tend to be putting words in God's mouth. How do they know? You can't prove religion. Number one. Well, I ask her, does she have the recording of God saying that? Yeah. yeah did God actually say that? And, and she'll probably go. Oh. Is she really sure it was God? Maybe it was Jesus. She made a mistake. Maybe it was Satan, or most well, likely. But don't use the Bible and religion a little bit high. That is your argument. Listen, okay, enough is enough. The point is, the realities, the problems in the United States were caused by corrupt politicians. Period. I'm not mentioning any party either way. Corrupt politicians. Well, no, both parties are to blame. Let's yes. Be fair. Yes. Come on. Now. Corrupt politics is what caused the economy and the job market to be what it is, and the social services to be what it is. They allowed it. And let it happen. Well, unions didn't help a lot. I mean, they were kind of outlived their usefulness now. We well, can't afford to really manufacture. I mean, an American made. needs so, a living wage to get by. I agree with that totally. You know what I mean? Yeah, so and, where do we draw the line here? Look at companies like McDonald's who don't don't believe in a minimum wage. They don't want to raise them. And if you take a vacation, you don't get paid. Right. And if you if you ask for time off, they if they threaten to fire you. You get threatened a lot. And they yeah. wonder why the turnover was so sky high. I, uh... Listen, the turnover in retail is always has always been high. The turnover because they treat even the managers, up, even the managers are treated like garbage. I think in fast food and what have you, these small paying industries. Well, number one, I, you know, we've discussed this many yeah. times. I think when you're on minimum wage or close to it, even maybe a little bit above, under a certain amount, you shouldn't be taxed. Yeah. These people need every penny they're making. Sure. Come on, motherfucker. Why are they taxing unemployment? It's, okay, so let's say you're making ten dollars an hour. Right. How much? How much are you really making an hour after taxes? Right. These people need every penny. Sure. Not why? A why are they taxing unemployment? That's absurd. That's insane. It's already been taxed. Right. Exactly. Social Security is not an entitlement, like some of these politicians make it sound. People paid for Social. Why are you trying to punish your people? Why are you trying to be a dark cloud of your own people's heads? And what's even worse, they're trying to punish the voters that put them in office. Hmm. Isn't it like cutting it's your sad. nose off despite your face? I mean, it, we, uh, 
Yes, it's a sad state of affairs, actually. Yeah. So. Now, yeah, this gentleman was so frustrated, disconnected, full mailboxes. It was, and nobody calls him back. It, it's just, uh, he was. Uh, I felt so bad for the guy. And oh, by the way, that organization in Northern New Jersey that has helped many people. You, you want to mention it? It's in um, uh, Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. I forget the name. It's, I have Path, Pathways. Pathways. Uh, something center. I forget what it is. Counseling center. That's, that's thank you. Pathways Counseling yes. Center. Uh, it's in, uh, for those of you that live in uh, northern New Jersey, it's in Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Look, look them up, uh, give them a call. It's a, it's a non-profit organization. It's a .org, Pathways uh, Counseling. Uh, but it's in Pompton Lakes. I'm sure you'll find that if you Google the information, and they will give great assistance to the uh, low-income and poor people that are being jerked around, that are being complete jerked around. William H. Morrill III, it was a pleasure as always having you on our show. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay. We're back. Now, of course, thank you very much. William H. Morrow III for doing a wonderful, invigorating show with me. Um, and we discussed the fact that the welfare system is definitely rigged to fail. He went over that, which is nothing new. Now, the last image that you saw before we return to our show, you saw a picture of uh, Cold Stone ice cream. It, uh, they have, uh, it's very expensive ice cream. It's like the ice cream version of uh, paying five bucks for a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Um, it's like it's like a glorified Baskin Robbins, you know, small portions and high prices. And it is summer after. I mean, it is summer with the hot weather we're having. So therefore, uh, there's a high consumption of frozen desserts. Now, if you notice in that photo. You see two cups of this uh, stone cold, cold stone rather, cold stone uh, ice cream. Notice that they're in each cup, before they add the ice cream, there's this uh, sugar laden uh, uh, waffle cone inside of the cup. And most people will say, ah. Oh, Oh, that looks tasty. It's cheap filler. What they do at, Sto at, at Cold Stone, they have a cutting board, a thick board, and they, they, they try to act like ice cream chefs. You know, they, 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 they combine flavors, they put the ice cream on the board, and they, and they mix it a little, and then they, they put it in a cup, but in the photo that you saw, 
being that there's a cheap sugar-laden cone inside the cup, this means they can get away with giving you much less ice cream because the cone is taking up space. Very, very similar to uh, going to a uh, Uno's pizza joint and ordering a uh, uh, soup in a bread bowl. Now, the bread is thick because you need the bread bowl to be able to hold the soup. But guess what? You're getting less soup. Whatever it happens to be, cream or broccoli, uh, New England clam chowder, whatever. So, uh, and then if you, if you know the show with Adam Richmond, uh, Man vs. Food, on the Travel Channel, you'll notice many of the places he goes to, they use french fries as a cheap filler in the sandwich. Another cheap filler, so they end up giving you less meat. And it goes on and on and on. White rice in a burrito, french fries in a sandwich, which should really be on the side, and a waffle inside of a cup in, 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 concerning uh, uh, Cold Stone ice cream. So I enter Cold Stone ice cream into this week's Chisler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. As uh, Sean Morrison says, that is our inductee, and of course, all the other food service companies out there in America that stiff people that screw the customer by using these little tricks to give you less of the product that they're paying good money for. You know, so that's that's basically it. The 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 uh, the target of the Chisler's discussion is cheap fillers used by the food industry. So so Cold Stone is the inductee. Okay. Um, I also want to say that uh, besides the allergy formula, uh, homeopathic allergy formula um, that I, I'm using, I've been using from uh, Botanical Choice, Botanical Choice, I'm, I, I, yeah, last night, for the second time, I tried their homeopathic joint formula and it works. For the first time in years, I've slept and woken up with no joint pain whatsoever in my shoulders. None. So that not so that's proof that homeopathy works. Nine. And this just Google botanical choice. There, it only costs five dollars bottle and it works like a charm. So I'm now using the allergy formula as well as the joint formula and of course they have many other formulas for every single health problem which is a great thing about homeopathy and it's inexpensive. You put the tablets under your tongue it's sublingual. Make sure you rinse your mouth with that water before doing so. Um, because you, you cannot be any other substance coming in contact with the tablet. And that's it. I apologize for the racket you hear in the background. Somebody, some landscapers are trimming hedges or something. Very rude of them to do that now during our taping. So now... Let us return back to the show. During the spring and early summer, we read of the high-tech corporations 
pressuring the current administration and Congress to increase the number of H-1B visas. Wow, it's beginning to double. To fill necessary positions that require specialized knowledge. Oh, specialized knowledge. Oh. The stated reason being that American citizens with such specialized knowledge were not available. Oh really? What about what about the what about the legions of people still out of work? Many of them are professionals and specialized workers. Now we read of Microsoft reducing its staff by eighteen thousand positions. Okay. Is the number of H one B visas being issued decreasing? Is it? After World War Two, industry acquired many skilled workers trained by the military at no cost to the corporations. Now they want government subsidies or government trained or non citizen labor to fill these specialized positions. Oh, gee, I wonder why. It's time these free riding corporations are told their free ride has come to an end. It's cheap labor for them. That's the real reason. Some progressive corporations invest in their employees' education, including non-work-specific studies. But it seems as if the majority want to save costs and expect the taxpayers to make up the difference through subsidization or reduced wages in difficult in a difficult labor market. I think it's increasing profits that they want, not necessarily lowering costs. Well, that's what increasing profits is. Yeah, they, 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 it, it's cheap labor for them to, to acquire the H-1B uh, uh, yes. immigrants to work for them, I, uh, professionals. It, do they pay them much less? Common sense is least common when the bureaucratic spin is being spun. But those citizens who see it have to make their voices heard. Let your senators and congressmen know that our sons, daughters, and grandchildren have a right to expect preference in the competitive labor market we see, we are seeing uh, globally. Uh, I, I got an answer for you. Learn to say no and I repeat, no to the corporations when they demand things. Yeah. Or ask for things. And of course, when they don't work in the public interest, we revoke their charter and we give the company to its workers as a co-op. Absolutely. Very simple. Defang them. Defang them, yes. We the people are the boss. And under the original agreement of the United States, we the people are supposed to be in charge. Yeah. President Obama attacked companies that use cross labor mergers to escape United States taxes, accusing them of being corporate deserters who renounce their citizenship to shield their profits. In remarks at a technical college on Thursday, the president called for a new economic patriotism from companies and decried those that use corporate inversions to benefit economically by being in the United States while adding to the tax burden of middle income families. And you see how hypocritical hypocritical that is. They they want to they want to renounce their citizenship so they do not have to pay taxes 
to the United States, which, uh, but they persecute little brown-skinned children from south of the border that are immigrants and illegal aliens, okay? That, they'll do that. But it's okay for corporations to become the uh, aliens, the, the non-U.S. citizens, okay? And to sell in the United States. I would tariff the hell out of their products that they have from outsource uh, jobs. When they, when they bring the products back into the United States for sale, I would tariff the hell out of, out of them. You know, so they're persecuted the poor little children uh, that are just trying to save themselves, those are illegal aliens they'll, they'll persecute and frighten and, and, and send back the corporations because it's convenient for them renounce their citizenship out of, out of greed, strictly out of greed. You shouldn't get to call yourself an American company only when you want a handout from American taxpayers. While dealing with multiple foreign policy crises and a slow economic recovery, Obama is turning to a populist economic message to help Democrats in the November congressional election. Do the right thing it should be the objective, not just to help the party. Blaming Republicans for obstructing Congress. Well, that's true. There's little chance Obama will get Congress to act quickly. <laughs> Republicans who favor addressing the issue as part of an overhaul of the U.S. tax code can block Senate legislation and stop the Republican led house from doing anything to limit inversions. Senate Democrats, including Charles Schumer of New York, said Thursday that they don't expect to act on the issue before Congress leaves next week for a month long vacation. Oh, they need a rest so badly. Republican Congress, they, they hardly work as it is. They don't work, actually, but they, they need a month. They need a month vacation. Some Senate finance Democrats, including Mark Warner of Virginia and Michael Bennett of Colorado, have declined to endorse Obama's approach. Instead, they prefer a broader revamp of the tax code. Republicans blame Obama for the stalemate on taxes, saying he hasn't done enough to negotiate with them. Why should he? Negotiating with them means you're giving up a lot because they don't negotiate. So you have to surrender to them. Until the White House endorses our tax reform plan or convinces the Senate Democrats to act, every pink slip from companies moving overseas may as well be signed President Barack H. Obama. House Speaker John Boehner's spokesman Michael Steele said in an email. Compromising with Republicans is not a 50-50 uh, proposition, a, a bargain. It, 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 they want more than 50% of every compromise. Boehner has not endorsed his party's tax plan beyond gen generalities. And the draft from Ways and Means Care Chairman Dave Camp has languished since it was released earlier this year. About 41 United States companies have switched their addresses 
to low tax nations, such as Ireland, since 1982, often through a takeover of a smaller company, reducing their tax bills while typically keeping their executives and listings in the United States. Sneaky, slippery like an eel. Eight more are pending, including Minneapolis based Medtronic Incorporated right. and Cannonsburg, PA based Mylon Incorporated, Pfizer Incorporated based in New York, attempted to move its tax address to Britain by purchasing the London based AstraZeneca. Giants, including Walgreens and Monsanto, have flirted with the idea, and more may do so amid no sign that Congress will act quickly on legislation to stop them. Paid off? I don't care if it's legal. No, they're paying. Oh. It's wrong, Obama said. It sticks you for the tab to make up for what they are stashing offshore. See, Obama is, uh, seems like he's come to life in his second and last term. Maybe because... He's, he's in it, you know? There's, there's no more um, no more terms in office, so he might as well come out with both guns blasting. Yeah, well, well not as well. done because the Republicans in the House don't give a damn. They're not going to compromise. Not, not today's Republicans, so he might as well give, give up with this bipartisanship bullshit that we used to hear Democrats use all the time. Like I remember Nancy Pelosi used every day, you know, they interview her. Bipartisanship, bipartisanship. It wasn't going. It, it didn't happen then, and it's not going to happen now. Mm -hmm. So he might as well use his executive orders, and he might as well just tell the American people the truth. And I think it would help a great deal in the November 2014 election in 2016 if the American people knew the real truth about the Republican Party. Uh, I think a lot of the people do know the real truth. They just don't go to Democrats. No, a well, lot. I'm very, very, very disappointed that Hillary Clinton is backing Monsanto. Of course. Extremely disappointed. That's not good. She's not going to win over... She's not going to win votes doing that. Sarah Palin. The, uh, the uh, imbecile number two. I would like to. Uh, I would like to uh, do something here in honor of the two uh, political brain cell deficient uh, imbeciles, Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman. This is how they sound when they speak, because they don't say anything meaningful. Slide whistle. That's how they sound to me. Their voices are extremely annoying and they have nothing, I repeat, nothing meaningful and intelligent to say. Go ahead. Sarah Palin is facing a 
$154 speeding ticket in her hometown of Wasilla. Oh, really? In her hometown? The former Alaska governor was stopped in July 16 and found to be driving between 10 and 19 miles per hour over the speed limit. No, it's not that much. The penalty includes a $144 fine and $10 police training surcharge. In discussing the ticket with TMZ, Palin made an auto racing reference, joking that she wasn't speeding, she was qualified. For what? Qualified for NASCAR. Oh, really? That's a stupid joke. Oh, it's a joke. Yeah. Kind of okay. stupid. It's kind of stupid that she was speaking in the first place. But wouldn't it be better if she were to got pulled over uh, a little intoxicated? That would have been beautiful. <laughs> you see, you're laughing like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> they are definitely two of the biggest numbskulls around Palin and Bachman. Just think of all the the, the, uh, the morons that voted for them. Yes. In blue, well, with Bachman in a blue state, traditional blue state of Minnesota, she got uh, elected and re-elected, right? That's correct. And same with Chris Christie. New Jersey is a traditional blue state. And that ogre got elected and re-elected. Over, over uh, Barbara Buono, who kicked his ass in, in the debates. You figure. Goodbye to Governor Christie. I wish. How sad for our state that Governor Christie is spending more and more time outside of the state promoting himself as a presidential candidate. Good luck. Rather than tackling the problems of our crumbling roads, our declining credit rate and our poor economy. Yeah, as well as the poor. But he's also using the state helicopter for more personal reasons, which is a no-no. How sad for our country that a politician who has broken his word and who appointed cronies to high positions, some of whom were later forced to resign, ends up being discussed as a potential presidential candidate. If the people who are praising Christie for his straight talk only knew that it is anything but, his bullying tactics are legend in our state. He's a wonderful actor who was able to tear up, tear up, excuse me, or express hurt feelings when it suits his purpose. He's equally able to cheer, excuse me, tear, into anyone who dares to disagree with him. Most important, do the people who laud him even know that our state has a poor record on job creation and economic recovery and that he rewards his staff with outrageous salary increases while making painful budget cuts elsewhere. As 
soon as he became governor, Christie started to see himself as president, aided by the candidate starved Republicans. Christie's lack of management skills and his pugnacious temperament would be a disaster on the national level. Dictator Chris Christie. The, uh, he's like Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. And now for a change of pace. Tomato pace? I am good looking. Active senior widower. I took 10 years younger, excuse me, I look 10 years younger than I am. Possible. I've been dating an attractive widow who is 10 years younger. That's all? Nearly a year now. That's all? Only 10 years younger? I treated her like a princess. Why did they have to be treated like a princess? Her to very nice restaurants, oh, God. movies, and concerts. Uh, I've helped her financially. She see, wrote to me. He sounds like a sugar daddy. You're everything to me. Yes, yeah, as long as you have money, you're everything to me. <laughs> Our relationship seems fine. Until a recent lengthy phone conversation, which somehow turned to the subject of sex. Oh, you mean he hasn't uh, consummated the relationship? This guy? I believe we're going to find out. Oh. Sex, she says, is the glue to a relationship. If the uh, if the jizz gets dry, and you don't clean it. <laughs> I disagree. Who disagrees? The gentleman. Oh, he disagrees. Right. You would think it would be the other way around. You Believing a relationship has to be more substantive to be successful. Well, yeah, you can't. You, well, you you can't just have compatibility. Uh, chemistry alone and you have to have the physical chemistry but then again you cannot just have the physical chemistry you need both because of physical limitations I can't perform as well as I once did see a doctor she called me old-fashioned because I I disagreed with her assertion that today all women have sex on the second or third date. Uh, um, well, if the chemistry is right, yeah, it could very well happen, sure. Well, in, the, in this modern age, yeah. I contend that not all women jump into bed that quickly. That's when I explicitly mentioned two previous relationships of hers, which she was sexually active. She blew up at me. Because he mentioned, yeah, they, they get mad and say, do not compare me to anyone else in your past. She said I had crossed the line. Crossed the line? Line because he told the story about one of his exes? Her exes. Oh. Are you listening to this letter? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She, she mentioned one of her exes. And no, he, and she he, did it. He, he did. He mentioned one of his, one of his exes. Two of hers. Oh, he mentioned some of her exes. Whom she was sexually active with. 
Okay, and she got because he brought up something from her past. He crossed the line. Wow. And she told him not to call again. Just because she mentioned her some something in her past? Well, isn't that part of a good communication between couples is to, is to talk over things? He was making a point. He was point. making a point that she jumped into sexuality with these other two people very quickly, maybe, oh. and they didn't last. Oh, so he was making the point that he and she have not indulged yet, and that their relationship, right. you know, must be better. And because he he made a very, very good point, and he was being very honest with her, it hit a raw a nerve uh, because there seems to be a pattern with this woman. She jumps in, in the sack too soon and the relationships uh, end soon. They don't last. I sent her flowers and a small gift with a note to call me. But no no response. Call me anytime. Not Call even me. a thank you. I'm a Deborah Harry Bondi. Despite this, is there a chance for us? I thought she was the companion I had wanted. She's got some issues. So she's mad at that. He, he was just trying to, uh, to help not only the, them, you know, their relationship, but to help her uh, acknowledge that there might be a pattern here. You and your companion were dancing around an issue very important to both of you. Neither of you is wrong about sex. Really. But your divergent views reflect your relative age and stage in life. On the one hand, she seems to be asserting that all women have sex early in a relationship. But not all. Not true. Yeah, that's, yeah. On the other hand, she is offended. Presumably because you dared to imply that by your standards she is just a wee bit slutty. Yeah, that, that's how she took it. Yeah, that's how she took it. He, he, he's holding off on sex because he can't perform. <laughs> because she feels so strongly about this. She should have been consistent in her response. Heck yes, buddy! You betcha! You betcha! Sounds like Sarah Palin. Drill, drill, drill! You betcha! This dust-up exposes a bit of a double standard. Women should be able to own their sexual choices free of judgment. And yet, yeah. it is still consistent ungentlemanly to bring up a woman's previous sexual relationships. Uh, Furthermore, you, you know this. Yes. And you did it anyway. The past, uh, hopefully people will learn from their past, but uh, it should not really uh, be the uh, the primary subject of discussion with couples living in the present. Do not wait by the phone. This relationship is over. Yeah, she is overreacting. She is overreacting, but then again, 
you know, he has the right to be concerned too if she's that loose. <laughs> I mean, the poor guy does not want uh, to contract an STD. Not the florist company. Uh, with the symbol of Mercury. That's FTD. Yeah, it's FTD. STD. STD. Sexually transmitted disease. Yeah. Thank you. All right. How we do it on time? I think one more. Not sure. Yeah, one more Bang for the up. Up. One more for the road, because I got to get good. What do you want? Do you want one on red meat? Or, or you want a big one on bees? Um, when you say big one. There it is. Three paragraphs. I mean, three columns. You know what? The bees are pretty important. The, the bees are pretty important to humanity. Save the red meat for for next week. Much of human activity is focused on the quest for efficiency. Getting the most out of our resources so that we can improve our standard of living. Problem is, what we perceive as efficient is often making us worse off in ways that are difficult for the human mind to grasp. Consider for example, the constant improvement in crop yields. On the surface, it's a classic illustration of Adam Smith's assertion that society benefits from individuals' desire to enrich themselves. That's capitalism, my boy. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Adam Smith. The profit motive drives farmers to get more corn wheat and rice from their land, and companies to produce pesticides and herbicides that help them do so. As a result, agricultural production more or less keeps up with the growing population, averting a Malthusian famine. So what you're saying is uh, quantity is uh, trumping quality. With big agro, we're talking about big agro, right? This relentless pursuit of efficiency, though, has repercussions that humans are only beginning to understand. Researchers have found that typical honeybee colonies contain trace residues from more than 120 pesticides which in concert can interfere with the bees' immune systems. Roundup, uh, Monsanto Roundup, is now found in, uh, in traces in mother's milk. Making them more susceptible to diseases. Sure, it's killing them off, too. Bees also lack the nutrients they would normally get from flower. have been eradicated from huge expanses of single crop fields. Yeah. This may help explain why honeybee colonies, which can be crucial to improving crop yields, have been dying all over the world. Hey, if, if bees become extinct, the world will, will only have four days of food left estimated. You have your bicycle ready with your uh, duffel bag of uh, emergency uh, things in there to get the hell out of here when uh, the solar flare comes and the grid goes bye-bye and, and, and in, in a few days uh, Indian Point melts down. Are you ready to get I don't the hell have, out of here? I don't have a bicycle. Well, the the car's only going to take you so far, because there won't be any gas. What about a pogo stick? What about a skateboard? No, I don't, I don't have any of those. 
Better get them ready. We just missed the flare. Could have been a biggie. I heard uh, we missed a, a killer solar flare uh, in the recent past that the, the media did not tell us about. Yeah, that's correct. It came close to being a doomsday solar flare. Carrington effect, yes. Bees uh, might also mean fewer birds. A recent study in the journal Nature looking at insect eating birds in the Netherlands reported that their populations in the 1990s fell faster in places with more pesticide pollution. It's likely an effect of the depletion of the insect. Bees included, on which the birds normally feed. Pesticides may reach further through food webs than we thought. Sometimes the conflict between efficiency and its unintended effects borders on the absurd. As in the case of a plant called Palmer amaranth. Yes, I know it well. The uh, the um, the grain of the uh, the Aztecs, uh, actually the Aztecs, Mayans, and the Incas, along with King Wa, it's, 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 a, it's a a super grain. It's, well, a pseudo, it's a pseudo grain, actually. It's not a grain per se. It's a seed, but it's it's extremely high in, in nutritional value. Well, this amaranth is known as pigweed. It's an invasive superweed that threatens United States agriculture. Yes. Especially the farming of soybean, corn, and cotton. Amaranth grows fast and has developed resistance to glycophosphate-based herbicides. Little do they know nutrition of amaranth seed is, it blows away the, their crops that they are trying to grow. <laughs> Including Monsanto's Roundup. Oh. The most important herbicide in global agriculture. Well, important for them. Important for you too because it's killing your feed and your insects and your bees. Yeah. Yeah. Palmer amaranth is resistant to Roundup in large part because we've been subjecting it to Roundup. Now it is costing U.S. farmers millions of dollars every year. The deeper irony is that the weed is edible and was once widely cultivated by Native Americans across North America. Absolutely. I think the, in the Peruvian ink is called the Coicha. Coicha is the Indian name. It's extremely nutritious. Let's see. Containing more protein than common grains such as corn, wheat, and rice. And oats. Blows all of them away. And is several times richer in calcium, iron, and vitamin E. That's right. In other words, the United States agriculture industry is killing off a valuable food source in its efforts to produce more raw material for the fast foods and sodas behind the country's problems with obesity. Aha! Here we go again. Fast food companies. The myopic focus on certain crops means that many farmers and businesses see no option but to use increasingly powerful and more toxic chemicals, even though this will only further increase weed resistance. Stories like these make a lots of people angry and typically draw accusations of scaremongering. A climate skeptic friend of mine once told me that a big factor in his 
outing of the science was that ultimately it all made him feel so guilty. Well, you're only going to feel guilty if you are guilty. <laughs> if you're doing something wrong. Right. You know. It's painful to think that we are responsible. Oh, really? Shouldn't but they the thought, you, isn't a helpful focus. Shouldn't they thought of that? that before they started destroying the planet? And our food supply? Ecological disasters have their roots in ordinary human attempts to solve problems. Absolutely no one, I'm sure, wants to see marine life or bees or birds disappear. But, and it's a topic I've touched on before, we do have a limited ability to imagine or foresee how different facets of our world may depend on or influence one another. I doubt we'll ever learn how to solve one problem without creating another. Hey, did you know that a Walmart ice cream sandwich will not melt in the sun? I, that's another article I read. Well, what the, the hell is it made out? I don't know, and I don't want to find it out, and I'm not eating any. Oh, God. <laughs> so, we need a different approach. Demoting efficiency as the only goal, and instead, pursuing greater flexibility. If we can't know what will happen in the long term, then we need to maintain a diversity of approaches over time and avoid getting locked into any one crop or industry. In farming, lots of inspiring people are working to develop polyculture that grow a diversity of crops, including amaranth. We used to call that truck gardens. Well, Native, Native, Amer Native Americans used, many, many crops. used to put uh, several seeds in one hole. They used to put uh, corn, squash, and, uh, and legumes in um, in one hole because they all, all three complemented each other. They all helped one another. Of course, the corn provided a trellis, a natural trellis, so on and so forth. They all did something good. Yeah, that's nothing new. The biologist Mark Winston has argued that allowing some land to go wild, which provides bees with a place to nest and forage can actually boost production and profitability. Better environmental stewardship won't always improve a farmer's bottom line. Sometimes the benefit will go to society as a whole. Why isn't he attacking the real culprit, which is Monsanto, and the politicians that are in bed with Monsanto? But it's, I guess this is a more scientific approach to the problem. Which is why, despite Adam Smith's insights, we can't always count on self-interest to realize socially desirable ends. Bingo! That's the problem with capitalism. Right. Which is it benefits self interest, not social interest. Yeah, it's all about the getway of life. Me, 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 I, I, I. The hell with the planet, the hell with people, the hell with animals, the hell with the environment, the hell with the the, the water, the air. Well, Every, everything me. is what's in it for me. And right now, the uh, Republican Congress is probably enjoying their month-long undeserved vacation with your tax dollars. Yeah. 
maybe perhaps on a beach somewhere in uh, in in Hawaii or Tahiti or wherever the hell they go. Yeah. Or their ranch. But um um oh I heard about the tornado that, that killed a uh, Jersey City Philippine couple in uh Virginia? In Virginia. Campground, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, and that's east, you know, on the east coast. It's, it's not Tornado Alley. Uh, I was talking to Reverend Bill during our lunch break that uh, people that live in Tornado Alley should uh, ha they should build subterranean homes, underground uh, apartments and condos. Um, so it's automatically a bomb shelter. You know, of course, you don't have windows, but you can use full spectrum uh, natural lights just make sure it's water tight tight as a clam or a crab's ass and uh, of course it's very cool in the summer but you you already have your apartment is already a bomb shelter mm. anyway thank you for joining us for this week's uncensored hard-hitting truth um, we will catch you uh, next time, next week. So have a safe and happy week till we meet again. Say so long to these people. So long, people. Yeah, summer is is rapidly coming to a close. No, no, we're about we're on the end. We're about two thirds of the way through summer, right? We're a waning moon. Yes, and, and my birthday is uh, next Friday. Next Friday is my birthday, and uh, and Rick Brown's birthday is this Monday. We're both Leos. So, oh, we'll catch you later. This has been a Megalife 21 production.